we present The Toff on the Farm, a radio serial in six parts, dramatised by Roy Lomax, from the novel by John Creasy. Starring Terence Alexander as The Toff, with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Part 4, Cause for Alarm. Did I hear you correctly, Jolly? Brought a bottle of the 1950 cognac? Yes, sir. My 1950 cognac? But really, I mean, aren't we coming to the end of the 1950? <laughs> oh, Richard, you should see your face. Come on, this is my floor. It would seem to be an appropriate occasion, sir. What well, do you think Mr Morn will appreciate? <laughs> I admit it, Richard. Jolly is brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, come on, you two. I can't wait to open that bottle. Look out! <laughs> what? Down! Quick, both of you, down! Get out! <laughs> My God! You OK, Monty? Yes. Jolly? <coughs> I believe so. The second door along the corridor, eh, Jolly? Yes, sir. Come on, then, let's get after him. Uh, Richard? Yeah, oh, you stay there, Monty. Stand back, Jolly. Now, be careful, sir. <coughs> sir, over by the window. Yes, I can see. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, no, you don't. Let go of me, You're you. You're not leaving just yet. Let me go. Oh, yeah, come on, Jolly, give me a hand, will you? Get your <laughs> filthy rock. That's it, Jolly. I've got her, sir. Ah, it's better. <laughs> Oh, very undignified, climbing through a window. Let go of me, you... Now, the more oh. you struggle, the more it'll hurt. Jolly, the window, can you see anyone? Uh, uh, yes, sir. A, a man, bottom of the fire escape. Shall I go after him? No, there's no point. He's got too much of a start. A pity. But we've nabbed one of them, haven't we? <laughs> and will you please uh, keep what still... What's going nothing. on in there? <laughs> will you let me go? Uh, Jolly, please. close the door. There's a good fellow. Yes, sir. Uh, that's better, isn't he? You Thanks. hurt me, you know. I'm going to have a bruise on my shoulder. Yes, I'm very sorry about that, but it was your own fault. I've got to get out of here. It was nothing to do with me, you know, what just happened. Really? Yes, I didn't know what you was going to do. I find that hard to believe. Anyway, we'll leave all that to the police, shall we? You mean they'll be coming here? Of course. Oh, no, I mustn't talk to the police. I mustn't. I mean, well, you know, in my line of business... Oh, yes, of course. But I'm not mixed up in this today, honestly. I mean, if I'd known what was going to happen, I'd have never have agreed to it, you know? Yeah, still it's too late now. Oh, well... But I didn't know, really, I didn't. Look, all I was told to do was come round here with this bloke and make out we was married, you know, and stay with him all day. Who rented the flat? I don't know. And the man you were with? I've never seen him before. And he hardly said a word all the time he was here. Uh, how much were you paid? 200 quid in advance. Oh, not bad. Well, that's what I thought. If only I'd known. Yes, and it's so unjust, isn't it? When the ones who are really guilty look like getting away with it. Don't you agree, Johnny? I do indeed, sir. I mean, the man who was here with you and also the fellow who arranged it. Um, who was that, by the way? I don't know. Are you sure? Yes. I just wondered, as you've been so honest with me. I told you, I don't know. Anyway... Who are you asking all these questions? I'm a man who's just been shot at, so I'm very interested, naturally. Well, no, I can't tell you any more. I dare. Oh, never mind. Uh, Johnny, would you just nip down to the foyer? When the police arrive, bring them straight up. Tell them we've got one of the two gunmen. Very well, sir. No, wait. I didn't have a gun. It wasn't me. We can't be sure, though, can we? OK, Johnny. No, don't go. All right. What do you want to know? Just who arranged this little shooting party? Would you let me go if I told you? Well, I don't think I can do that, but I will put in a word with the police for you. Well, I was in a pub last night and this bloke came in, said he needed a girl to do a job for him. It was going to take all day. Well, the money was good and well. I said I'd do it and that's it. Not quite. His name, please. No, I can't. He said if I breathed a word about it... What was his him... name? Oh, all right. Um, Modwin. Yeah, something like that. Or Lodwin. Could it have been Lodwin? Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, God, he'll kill me. Uh, no, he won't, Miss... Uh, uh, what's your name? Lola. Lola Bridger. Uh, well, Lola, if it'll put your mind at rest, Mr Lodwin is in no position to kill anyone. But he might mark me, you know. No, I don't think so. Uh, but you have got yourself involved in a rather serious business. Oh, God, I knew it. You've got to let me go. 
Oh, God, it's the police! And you're sure there's nothing more you can tell me? No, I've told you all I know. Uh, Jolly, there's um, uh, something I want to check in the hall before the police arrive, uh, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, would you mind taking charge of Miss Bridger for a moment? Certainly, sir. I mustn't talk to the police. Oh, I'll be a second, Jolly. Yes, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> Will you please be still, Miss Bridger? Let me go! Oh! Oh, my leg! Oh! 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 oh. Well, Jolly? It worked, sir. As usual. Poor oh, man, the things you have to put up with in the course. Yes, sir. You are all right, eh? Oh, uh, of course, sir. Yeah. Just a little over-dramatisation for effect, you understand? Yes. Well, you know what to do. Of course, sir. Follow her, see where she goes... And expect you want her home address, if possible. Uh, that's right. And uh, then back to the flat, Jolly. Do you suppose she knows more than she's told us, sir? No, I think we got the truth, but... Uh... She's a very frightened lady, sir. She is, Jolly. Anyway, off you go. I'll stay here, make sure Monty's OK, and tell the police what's been happening. More or less. Well, Mr Rollison, I think we've done as much as we can for the moment. Thanks for your help. Uh, pleasure, Sergeant. Won't trouble your friend again, not tonight. Oh, that's kind of you. He, uh, he needs to rest. Yes. Well, uh, good evening, sir. Oh, good evening, son. Well, Monty, I think the police are just about ready to call it a day. Oh, thank goodness. Are they reasonably satisfied, you think? Mm, intrigued would be a better word. Well, it beats me, I must say. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry I pushed you over when we came out of the lift. It must have hurt the leg. No, don't give it a thought, Richard. Anyway, I can always replace an artificial leg. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but, you know... I just can't stop thinking about what might have been. Any one of us could have been killed. I don't think so. No, but surely that's obvious. It's to do with this case of Gillian and the farm. Yes. Well, you're involved. I suppose jolly, indirectly. My dear Monty, there was no case until a few hours ago. And remember, it was only this morning you asked me to help. Well? I rather fancy this shooting incident was planned before then. That would mean the gunman was waiting for me. Well, whoever was waiting wouldn't reasonably expect to see jolly and me here, would they? Richard, you're beginning to frighten me. Why should anyone want to kill me? No, you're jumping to conclusions. The wrong ones, I think. Reassure me, please. Monty, if you take a look in that lift, you'll see that all those bullets hit an area no bigger than a dinner plate. Now, that's some shooting. If that gunman had wanted you dead, you'd be dead. I still don't understand. It's my guess the little effort this evening was staged. I think it was meant to scare you. It certainly succeeded. But why? And I haven't worked that one out yet, and I could be wrong. No, I'm sorry, Richard, but I, I still think I'm lucky to be here. Thanks to you. Oh, come on, Monty. Any ideas who the man was? No. What about that American chap? What, Red Brandt? Yes. Not sure I like the sound of him. Has Gillian been talking about him? Well, yes. He seems to be going out of his way to impress her. You know. I do. Well, we don't know anything about him, where he comes from, what he's doing over here. It's a thought, Richard. Yes, and let me add another. A touch of jealousy from someone not a million miles away from this flat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, all right. Ah, but be honest, you don't know much about it. Well, I'll bear it in mind, Monty. You know, I think Gillian would be very flattered. And you think she's safe at your Aunt Gloria's? Oh, yes. No one knows where she is, do they, apart from us? Jolly and, uh, oh, the bright man, Inspector Bishop. You know, don't you worry, Monty. Well, that's easy to say, Richard. Look, tell you what I'll do. It isn't far out of my way. I'll go over and see her now. I'd be grateful. Anyway, it's better she hears about tonight from me rather than the papers or the news. She's had quite enough shocks for one day. And uh, the sooner you get to bed, the better. Good night's sleep and you'll be a new man in the morning. Oh, don't get up. I'll uh, see myself out. Uh, Good night, Monty. Uh, Good night, Richard. Ah, oh, well... Hello. Uh, hello, M Monty. How are you, old man? Who's that? Don't you recognise me? Good heavens. I don't believe it. Yeah, I thought you'd be surprised. Monty just rang up on the off chance, wanted to ask a little favour. Shouldn't be too much trouble for you, I should think. Hello, Monty. Oh, good evening, Mr Rollison. Do come in, sir. Oh, thanks. I hope I haven't called at a bad time. I expect my aunt's in the middle of dinner. No, sir. Lady Gloria's gone out with friends to the theatre. Well, she didn't mention that to me. Still, not to worry. It's, uh, it's really Miss Selby I want to see. But she's gone out as well, Mr Rollison. Well, with my aunt? No, sir. She had a phone call about half an hour ago. And when she'd finished, she put on her coat and went out. What well, did Miss Selby say where she was going? No, sir. Ah, I told her to stay indoors. She should be resting. Uh, do you mind if I use the phone? Oh, please, Mr Rollison. Oh, by the way, Molly, um... 
Uh, Miss Selby's caller, it was a man? Yes. Did he give his name? Uh, Morn, Monty Morn, or uh, uh, Bishop? No. He just said he wanted to speak to Gillian Selby. I wouldn't be jolly, of course. Oh, I'd know his voice, sir. Yes. Nobody else knew she was here. Um, could he have been an American? Oh, I don't really know. He didn't sound American. Sorry, Mr. Rollison. Oh, that's all right, Molly. Well, thanks, anyway. Well, I'm getting no reply from home, so uh, I suppose Jolly's been delayed. Look, I'm going back home now. It's possible Miss Selby may try to contact me. If she rings, would you tell her where I am? Yes, sir. Oh, and just one thing. What's that, Mr. Rollison? Well, when Miss Selby left here, did she seem at all upset? Well, come to think of it, she did look... Well, as if she'd had a bit of a fright. Ah. It's only me, sir. Sorry I was delayed. Hi there, Jolly. Mr. Brent, what are you doing here? Well, there was no one in, so I just made myself comfortable. How did you get in, sir? Same way I went out, Jolly. Remember? Over the roof and through the window? So, where's your boss? I thought he'd be home by now. Apparently not. Hmm, still down at the cottage with Miss Selby, I suppose. No, sir. Uh, where is he, then? Somewhere in London, sir. Mr. Rollison brought Miss Selby and her friend Mr. Morn back to town. Oh, that's great. Give me her address. I'd like to call on her. I'm afraid Miss Selby's address must remain secret for the moment. Mr. Rollison considered it best in the interests of her safety. So, I guess I'll have to ask the toff myself. That would be more appropriate, sir. Hmm. And did you have any success with your own inquiries? No, I tried to phone my client back in the States, but he was out. Say, Jolly, that uh, Mr. Morn you mentioned, would he be called Monty? That is correct, sir. Yes, Gillian talked about him a lot. What kind of a character is he? <clears throat> Mr. Rollison should be home very soon. Say, what's eating you, Jolly? Sir? Are you under a vow of silence or something? No, sir. Well, I don't get it. Anyway, I've got some news for you. I figured I ought to meet this Mr. Morn, so I got his address and went over there this evening. Indeed, Hello sir. Hello there. Yes, sir. Jolly. Uh, I'm in here, sir. I don't know what on earth's going on. Ah, oh, Mr. Brandt. What I... are you doing here? Well, I've been trying to get some answers out of Jolly here, but he's not talking. Really? Uh, Jolly, any messages for me? There are several that I was unable to give you earlier. Oh, uh, no, in the last half hour. I've only just returned myself, sir. Ah, I wondered if Gillian might have called. No, sir. What's this about Gillian? Oh, nothing to worry about. But I'd like to know. Well, she seems to have disappeared. But Jolly said you'd taken her somewhere safe. Yes. Uh, Mr. Brandt, would you excuse Jolly and me for a moment? Oh, I guess so, yes. It's a nuisance him being here. Jolly, that girl you followed, any luck? Yes, sir. I traced the lady to a basement flat in Kentall Street, a rather unsavoury area. And she lives there? Yes, at number 37. It was confirmed by a local shopkeeper. Oh, good. And, sir, I put one of your cards through her letterbox. It occurred to me that should the lady need help, it may encourage her to contact you. You don't miss a trick, do you, Jolly? Thank you, sir. And there is one more thing you should know. Yes? Apparently, Mr. Brent went to visit Mr. Morn earlier this evening. Did he? Yes, sir. Well, let's rejoin our guests, shall we? Ah, you know, Mr. Wallison, I've been thinking about Gillian's disappearance. Yes? You seem to be taking it a bit too casual for me. Yes, it is rather annoying. Annoying? It's a damn sight more than that, sir. Well, it's not your problem. You think not? Well, I'd like to see some action, and fast. Would you? Yes, sir, I would. And so you shall. Hey, hey, what, what is this? Let go of me, Robinson. Uh, don't struggle, Mr. Brandt. Uh, don't want to break an arm now, do we? Uh, what's the... Jolly, uh, would you go through Mr. Brandt's pockets, please? Very good, sir. Uh, if you tell me what you're looking for... I they... don't know, a knife. Perhaps one that was used to murder two men. Hell, you don't think that I did that. No knife, sir. You see? But what do you make of this, sir? Ah, oh, now that is interesting, isn't it? It is indeed, sir. Well, Mr. Brandt, what can you tell me about this? I mean, one doesn't expect to find a man walking around with a gun in his pocket, unless he intends to use it. Hi, hey, Cyril. Yeah. Has Superintendent Grice gone home yet? No, I don't think so. You might just catch him. I'm supposed to give him this report. Oh, you'll be popular. Anyway, you better go in. And the best of luck. Come in. Yes, what do you want, Constable? I was told to give you this, sir. Well, what is it? A report, sir. I can see that, laddie. Well, come on, don't keep it to yourself. A shooting incident, sir. Yes, yes. Well, I'll say goodnight, sir. This is all I need. Now, come back here, laddie. Well, he's really done it this time, hasn't he? Sir? You've read the report? 
Yes, sir, there are no injuries, no harm done. Oh, you think so, do you? Well, it's on the report, sir. Look, laddie, if you ever read a report with the name Richard Rollison on it, you die for cover. Will you remember that? Yes, sir. It's the third time today his name's on a report. Two from Brighton Police, now this one. And it's on my patch. This is too much. Is this Rollison a villain, sir? You could be right. Ah, oh, well, I'd better go and see what he's been up to. Constable, tell him to have a car ready for me. Yes, sir. And then I want you to ring this number. Well, if he's not at home, try and discover where he's gone. Call me on the car radio. Will you do that, laddie? Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Rollison, you sure got a very suspicious mind. Are you surprised? I mean, after what's happened today? Well, I guess not. The only thing I can be certain of is that the bullets that were fired at us didn't come from this gun. Well, that's something. A different caliber. This is a forty-five, And it hasn't been used since I left the States. Yes, well, I'll have to take your word for that. It's true, Mr. Rollison. Coffee, sir? Oh, thanks, Johnny. Look, I didn't even know there'd been a shooting. Sure, I went to Morn's apartment. I wanted to meet him. I I was telling Jolly here. Isn't that so, Jolly? That is correct, sir. But when I get there, the place was crawling with cops, so I took off fast. Yes, you're not very keen to meet the police, are you? I already told you. It's not that I want to dodge them, but I have to be free to move around. And it's all strictly legitimate, you said. Right. And you can't tell me why. I'm not at liberty to say. No. I guess it doesn't look too good to you. You're right. And you shouldn't be surprised if I am a little suspicious. And tell me, why do you want to buy Selby Farm? I can't say, Mr. Rollis. See what I mean? You know, I can't make up my mind whether or not you're just using me. And if you are, for what reason? But you'll go along with me to find out. Well, I may regret it, but uh, yes, for the moment. Thanks. Oh, uh, yes, Jolly, another cup of coffee for Mr. Brand. Certainly, sir. I'll take it black this time, Jolly. And for you, sir? Uh, No, thanks. I'm going out. Very good, sir. Uh, Can I ask, where are you going? No. I want you to stay here. Drink your coffee, watch TV, whatever you like, but wait until I get back. You're going to play straight. You're not going to the police. I meant what I said, all right? Well, okay, then. Right. Uh, Jolly, I don't expect to be away too long, so if anyone calls, you know what to do. Yes, sir. Uh, See you later, then. Goodbye, sir. Does he usually go off like that? I beg your pardon, sir? Without telling you where he's going? Frequently, sir. I wish I knew what he was up to. No doubt when Mr. Rollison returns, sir. Now, would you care for more coffee, or can I get you something a little stronger? Richard! Hello, Monty. What are you doing here? I'm sorry to get you up. Oh, you're still dressed. Yes. Expected you to be in bed by now. I didn't feel too sleepy. Oh, in that know. case, I'll come in, if I may. No, I can't we leave it till the morning. Yeah, I won't stay more than a minute or two. I'd rather you didn't. Excuse me, Monty. No, Richard, please. Well, who was it, Monty? Oh, shame on you, Monty. No, you don't understand. It's Richard. Oh, no. What on earth are you doing here? I might ask the same of you, Gillian. I told you to stay at my Aunt Gloria's. But, Monty, you promised you wouldn't. I didn't tell him, I swear. Oh, well, it's too late now. I'm sorry if I've arrived at a bad moment. No. Anyway, we might as well tell you now you're here. No, let me, Gillian. And I'm, I'm sorry, Richard. I, I know I shouldn't have phoned Gillian. Well, why did you? Well, I'm sorry, but I had to. Don't you care what happens to her? I'm doing my damnedest to make sure she's safe. That's what you asked me to do, isn't it? To help her. Yes, of course. Well, then. But that's what we wanted to tell you, Richard. I don't need your help anymore. What? You've been very kind and I'm grateful. We both are. But now I'd like you to drop this whole business. Just forget about it. Really? Yes. We've been talking, Richard, and, Mm. well, Gillian's decided to do what those people want, to let them have the farm in exchange for Alan. Well, I'd never forgive myself if anything should happen to him. It's a small price to pay. I see. After all that's happened. And then when Monty told me about the shooting tonight... It really scared me, Richard. Well, I can't let this go on. I feel it's all my fault. Anyway, we've talked, and that's what I'm going to do. But at least it will put a stop to this whole dreadful business. You think so? Of course. Oh, I know the police will have to investigate the murders, but when the farm's gone and Alan's back home, we'll be out of it, won't we? You know, you amaze me. You really do, the two of you. Remember, Monty, you couldn't wait to get me involved, and Gillian, you needed help. You still do. But not any longer. So you're going to give in, are you? You're going to let these criminals, murderers, get away with it? Well, it's easy for you to say that. You're only concerned with right and wrong. I'm thinking about Alan. So am I. But it's not the same for you, is it? Gillian. Gillian, listen. Someone wants your farm so badly, they've killed two men and they've kidnapped your brother. Now, can you be sure that even if you do what they say, they'll let your brother go? 
I believe they will. Well, I... What's that? I didn't hear anything. Now, Richard, we're both... What are you... What are you doing? Quiet. Uh, no, don't go in there. Ah, gotcha. Come along, young man. Let him go, Richard. Uh, oh, it's be kind to burglars, Daisy. He's not a burglar. You're hurting. Tell him to stop, Gillian. Ah, you know Gillian as well, do you? In that case, I'm terribly sorry. Do forgive me. Uh, yes, well... Well, isn't anyone going to introduce me? No? Well, then, how about an inspired guest? Let me see. Um, Alan Selby. Oh, Monty. Yes, I think I detect a slight family resemblance. Well... Come on, everyone, what's wrong? Here we have one brother who was kidnapped, now safe, alive and well. But he's not free, Richard, not really. Oh, what do you mean? Of course he's free. He's here, isn't he? They've only let him go for a few hours on one condition. And what's that? I have to persuade Gillian to let them have the farm. <laughs> How can they get you back now? You can go to the police. You don't understand. This is a big organisation. Mm. They'd get to me or Gillian somehow. We'd never be safe. I've got to do what they say. Well, I must say, I've never heard of this before. The kidnappers releasing the kidnapped to organise his own ransom. They're obviously confident, Richard. They know they're going to get what they want in the end. Yes, it seems so. Now do you understand why we don't want any more help from them? No, not really. But it does explain a lot. You must stay out of this for Alan's sake. Well, for all our sakes. Oh, I want an end to all this business. That's why I've decided they can have the farm. Yes, well, it's your farm. You can do what you like with it. Yes. So you're dismissing me. Well, if you have to put it like that, yes, I am. Very well, then. And you won't do anything to upset the deal? I shall leave you to it, if that's what you mean. You promise? Have you ever known me break my word, Monty? No, Richard. Well, then. Oh, and uh, just before I go, please be very careful, won't you? Well, I'll say good night to you all. Sorry, I was miles away. What are you doing down here? Well, I'm looking for you. I'm flattered. How did you know where I'd be? Well, I heard you weren't at home. I've seen a report on a shooting incident just now, so I put two and two together. Uh, some people wonder why you made superintendent. Ah, that's enough of that. Come on, get in. Oh, thanks. Uh... Well, you've really excelled yourself today, haven't you? Now, what do you mean? Well, that scene of the crime... Murder one at Brighton, murder two at Selby Cottage, and now this shooting incident. You get about a bit, don't you? Oh, you know me, Bill. I do, sadly. But still, I suppose it is rather overdoing it. I've read the police reports, and I thought it was time I heard your version. Well, believe it or not, I just happened to come across them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I've heard that before. No, really, Bill. How did you get involved in the first place? A friend of mine wanted me to look at a farm, this Selby farm. A girl he knows was trying to sell it. She'd had a little problem with the sitting tenant. He thought I might be able to help, and that was it, really. How do these two murders come into it? Well, search me. Except they were both men who wanted to buy the farm. You know who they were, of course. I recognised Gus Fenner. He's been calling himself Lodwin. Yes. You ever heard of Charlie Hebden? Oh, vaguely. He was the other one. That's right. I got the details from the Brighton police. Fenner and Hebden used to work together, you know. Oh, did they? Yeah, that's why I'm particularly interested in what's happening to them. Could be tied up with another wee job I'm working on just now. Oh, what's that? Well, you mind your own business. <laughs> Sorry? No, oh, no. In fact, it's not so wee. Nearly too big. Well, you know Gus Fenner. All a bit of a headache, I suppose. And complicated. No sooner you uncover one trail and another one opens up. And trying to keep track of the people. Oh, it's murder. You can say that again. Hey. Yes, but at least you do know where Fenner and Hampton are. Now, if I could only lay my hands on the American. What American? Well, I doubt if you'd know him. You never know. Well, he's over here somewhere, hiding out. No, I'd like to find him. For well, any particular reason? Well, I'm not sure how it ties in, but from what I hear, he's the most dangerous of the lot. The man's a killer. You know, what's his name? It's Brandt. William T. Brandt. Bill. Yeah? If I could tell you where Brandt is at this if moment... If you do know, let's have it. I think he's at my flat. What? And Jolly's alone with him. Oh, my God. Yes, Bill, I'd be grateful. Foot down, please. Right.
Briggs, you get on up there. I'll follow you. Thanks, Bill. And for good sake, be careful. Where the hell's my key? Ah. Oh. Jolly? Jolly, where are you? Jolly! Good evening, sir. Oh, Jolly, are you all right? Indeed I am, sir. Thank God. Well, where's Brandt? Is something the matter, sir? Oh, where is he, Jolly? Mr. Brandt left just two or three minutes ago. Oh, good evening, Superintendent. How nice to see you. And looking so well. Aye, it's good to see you as well, Mr. Jolly. Oh, those downstairs. He's not here, Bill. Apparently he left a couple of minutes ago. We've just missed him. Well, at least Mr. Jolly's okay. I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. Uh, Superintendent Grice has just told me Brandt is a very dangerous man. And you were concerned for my safety? That's about it. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Jolly. <laughs> Forgive me, sir, but I would not have placed Mr. Brandt in that category. He seemed a very civil person. You shouldn't judge a book by the cover, Mr. Jolly. And nevertheless, sir, I believe I am a good judge... Well, forget it, Jolly. Anyway, why did he leave? I asked him to wait for me. Well, sir, Mr. Brent was becoming a little agitated about your own whereabouts. And when I took the call from Scotland Yard, he was decidedly nervous. He waited for a while, then decided to leave. Well, did he say where he was going? Only that he was going to drop out of sight. Well, that's hard luck, Bill. I'm sorry. Look... Why don't you come in for a nightcap? Uh, no, I'll get on back to the yard. Well, at least we know Brant's in London. That's something for us to work on. Oh, well, thanks for everything. I'll be hearing from you, I suppose. Oh, you can depend on that. Uh, good night, Mr. Jolly. Good night, Superintendent. Well, thank goodness that alarm came to nothing. I can tell you, Jolly, I was just a little worried. But there was no need, sir. After your initial caution, I was always keeping a very close eye on Mr. Brant. <laughs> I'm sure you were. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long day. May I suggest a large scotch, sir? You may, Jolly. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Rollison's residence? Is he in? Uh, yes, uh, just one moment. It's Lola Bridger, sir. Oh, yes, yes. I wonder what she wants. Uh, thanks, Jolly. Hello? Is that Mr. Rollison? It is. Oh, Mr. Rollison, you've got to help me, please. They're after me. I know they are. Uh, not so fast, Lola. Who's after you? I told you, didn't I? I said they'd kill me if I talked. I should never have said what I did. But who is it that's after you? I saw them hanging round the end of the street. I wasn't sure them, but they've been asking questions, I heard. They're round here now. I know they are. All right, Lola. Now, look, you go check the doors and windows. Make sure they're locked. Yes. Yes, I'll do that. And I'll be round straight away, OK? Please, Mr. Wallace, as soon as you can. I'm on my own here, you see. There's nobody else. Please, Mr. Rollison, as soon as you can. Please. That was part four of The Toff on the Farm, a serial for radio dramatized by Roy Lomax from the novel by John Creasy, starring Terence Alexander as The Toff with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Gillian Selby was played by Heather Stoney, Monty Morn by Terence Hardiman, Red Brandt by Ed Bishop, Superintendent Grice by Duncan Lamont, Lola Bridger by Liz Gebhardt, and Alan Selby by Alaric Cotter. The producer was John Fawcett Wilson.